you. It is such a privilege to be with you on this watch night. What a blessing it is to be able to celebrate, even in virtual space, uh, how God has kept us all year long. What a true privilege it is just to be able to tell him thank you for the great and marvelous things that he has done. Before we go any further, let us go to God in a word of prayer. Most gracious, eternal God, our Father, we say thank you. Thank you, Lord God, for this day. Thank you, God, for being good to us. Thank you, Lord, for making ways and opening doors. Thank you, Lord God, for allowing us to experience your presence. We pray, God, that you would be with us, that you would have your way throughout this evening, Lord God, that we, Lord God, can celebrate you for who you are. And thank you, Lord God, for all that you have done. We pray, Lord God, that you would be with us. Grant us the, the joy of your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. What a blessing it is to be a part of this watch night service as we have done uh, for many years as we gather, not necessarily always in virtual space, but as we gather this year in this form, we are thankful to God. We will have an amazing night tonight. Uh, over the next hour, what you will hear uh, are songs uh, that our music ministry has provided for us uh, all year long, and we're so thankful to God for how they have been such a blessing to us. And then you will hear uh, sermons from all of our associate ministers, and certainly uh, at midnight we will be praying as we bring the new year in. Our associates were given the task of preaching from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 8 and 9, which declare we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, cast down, but not destroyed. We are excited about what the Lord has for us tonight. Let us continue on in worship. Wonder and power. 
Calvary Baptist Church, we are so, so thankful to be joining with you tonight on this Watch Night 2020. So thankful to be serving here at this amazing church alongside our amazing leadership with Pastor Wright and First Lady, Lady Wright. Uh, so thankful for every deacon, every associate, every trustee, every ministry worker. Uh, so thankful to call Calvary Baptist Church our home. We love you all and certainly wish you all a happy new year. We're going to the word of the Lord uh, tonight. It is found in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 8 through 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 8 through 9, and we're reading from the New King James Version. It reads as thus, we are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you so much for your goodness, for your mercies, for your loving kindness. I thank you so much for bringing us to this moment. We pray now, God, that your word will be spirit and be life. God, that it will penetrate our very hearts, God, and be edification for what we need. We give you thanks, praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to preach briefly around the text, still hopeful. Still hopeful hopeful. Wow, what an absolutely amazing, phenomenal, crazy, and ridiculous year this has been. Time would fail me if I begin to unpack all that has occurred during this year. Charles Dickens, I believe, sums it up best in the opening line of the classic book, A Tale of Two Cities, by stating, it was the best of times and it was the worst of times. I often pondered how could two diametrically opposed ideas exist in the same space and both be true until 2020 happened. We started out the year with the news headlines of Australian brush fires that burned 47 million acres of land. Then we moved on to Prince Harry and Meghan stepping down from the royal family. And January 9th, the World Health Organization announced a deadly coronavirus strain that had emerged in Wuhan, China. Just 10 days later, on January 19th, the first case of COVID-19 was reported in the United States. Then our hearts were again saddened to hear of the passing of Kobe Bryant and his daughter Gianna, along with seven other passengers in the deadly helicopter crash. March 11th came and the World Health Organization declared COVID-19 a global pandemic. We found ourselves on lockdown, sheltering in place, physically distancing, and searching stores for toilet paper. Some of us now found our kitchen tables doubling as our new office space because we are now working from home. And some of us still having to go out to work because our occupation was now deemed essential. Some of us found ourselves being laid off from work or being furloughed and having to deal with long wait times trying to sign up for unemployment. Then as we progressed throughout the year in the month of May, we all watched in shock as life slowly left the body of one George Floyd as he struggled to breathe with the knee of a police officer on his neck. And again, with the senseless killings of Ahmaud Arbery, Breonna Taylor, Rayshard Brooks, and countless others, we were once again reminded that racism is still alive and well in America, even during a pandemic. All the while, COVID-19 continued to rage on, claiming the lives of some whom we love so dearly. However, in the midst of all this, we were still able to find glimmers of hope in the things that mattered most. We found ourselves spending time and more time together as a family. Memories were created and bonds were strengthened over board games such as Monopoly, Scrabble, Chess, or Checkers. We found ourselves cooking and baking more and trying new recipes, learning a new hobby, finding joy in the little things. We discovered how to have drive-by birthday celebrations and Zoom parties, and some of us celebrated milestone birthdays and anniversaries and brought new houses and brought new cars or welcomed a new baby into the world. We celebrated achievements such as graduating from high school or graduating from college or getting a promotion. Some of us have been able to save more money now than ever before. Just as we have experienced this dichotomous tension of both celebration and tragedy in 2020, the theme of our text is much the same. 
We are hard pressed on every side, verse 8 declares, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed. In the English language, brothers and sisters, there is a part of speech known as a conjunction that links two separate clauses or ideas together to form a complete sentence. In our text, those conjunctions are words that are used such as yet and but. Now before you and I burn our 2020 calendars and try to erase the memories of 2020, can I give you one reason why we can still be hopeful? God has been good in spite of it all. Despite everything you face, God has kept you. He keeps waking you up day after day after day. He has kept your family. And the fact that you are watching this lets me know that you've got something to thank God for. We can declare that if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, where would you and where would I be? At every conjunction of this year, there God was. It was in those moments of my conjunction in my personal life where my faith now I found being increased. It was in times during the process that was 2020 that I learned how to reimagine my relationship with God. It is during the conjunctions of life that I learned learned how to make my living room now a sanctuary. I learned how to do as David declared, bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. I may have been down to my last and you may have been down to your last and you may have had more bills than money and you may have been trying to figure out where is the next meal coming from. But can I remind you, brothers and sisters, God came through each and every time. If you look over the recesses of your life, if you look across every month down through January all the way down to now December 31st, you can declare with me that God has still been good. I may not have had the vacation that I wanted to go on, but I am still alive. I may not have had everything that I wanted, but I had everything that I needed. You can insert your own. I may not, but brothers and sisters, don't fail to add, but God. And that's simply it. I just came to declare to you tonight that is the but God moments of your life that that is there where I found God working on my behalf. That is there where I found that his grace is sufficient for me. That is there that I found the scripture to be true that when I am weak then he is strong. And brothers and sisters as I take my seat if the children of Israel were here to testify they might say that I may have been in bondage in Egypt, but God sent Moses to deliver. If Joseph would hear, I believe he would stand up and declare that I may have been in the pit, but thank God he took me from the pit to the palace. If Joshua were here, he may declare and testify that I may have had to face Jericho's walls, but God gave me the victory. If Daniel were here, brothers and sisters, he would say I may have spent the night in the lion's den, but I came out alive. And that's your testimony. I came out alive. I came out still standing. I came out still strong. I came out still fighting. I came out still standing by the grace of God. And if Jesus was here, brothers and si sisters, he would say, I may have had to face Calvary's cross, but early Sunday morning, I came out and was resurrected with resurrection power. So no matter what we face in 2020, we can declare that we made it and we are still hopeful that every promise of God for your life shall come to pass. And in the words of the old song that we used to sing, that I got a feeling that everything is going to be all right. I've got a feeling that everything, not just some of the things or anything, but everything is going to be all right. So brothers and sisters, be not dismayed, whatever be tied. God God will take care of you. I said, God will take care of you. So if I got to keep wearing this mask, I will. If I got to keep sanitizing, I will. If I have to keep streaming Sunday morning services, I will. Because I am still hopeful that God is still moving on my behalf. And I'm declaring today that God is still moving on your behalf. Happy New Year. God bless you. We love you. And remember to always still be hopeful for a brighter day. God bless. Our theme for this evening is still hopeful. 
and the passage of scripture I will be reading for you from the New International Version is 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 8 and 9. We are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. I was only given 10 minutes to share my thoughts with you this evening, and this short passage of scripture is so rich that I dare not try to cover more than a piece of it. So for our time together, I'd like to lift up part A of verse 9, which is persecuted but not abandoned. And under the theme of still hopeful, my working title tonight is He's Able. Would you pray with me? Dear Heavenly and Gracious Father, Lord, we thank you for this moment in time. We thank you for this space, Lord. We thank you for your word, which is living and breathing and sharper than any two-edged sword, God. We ask, Lord, that you would allow your spirit to rise up within each of us, God, that you would increase our sensitivity to your spirit, O God, that you would speak to us, that you would allow our hearts and minds to be changed, that you would allow us to be strengthened and encouraged, O God, that you would allow us to carry your light into this dark world. We thank you, God, and give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen persecuted, but not abandoned. As believers, many of us are familiar with the idea of being persecuted. We understand that since the beginning of time, since people first began to, began to claim Christ, that Christians and believers all over the world have been subject to persecution. And although the method of persecution uh, changes throughout the years and the centuries, the reality is it's still happening every day. The Bible has promised believers that we are going to be persecuted, that we are going to endure trials, that we are going to have tribulations, that we are going to have seasons of struggle and seasons of persecution. And that is true for all of us. And that has been especially true for 2020. But 2020 has been an exceptionally long year for many of us. And the reality is, is that a lot of us are walking around at the end of 2020 feeling bitter and angry about the way the year has gone. Many of us might be feeling weak or defeated, and those are often the feelings of someone who is persecuted. Let's define who a person who's been persecuted is. Is one who's endured systematic mistreatment, oppression, or victimization. Most of us can link our feelings of anger, anxiety, and apathy to living into a country that allows us to be victimized daily by an unseen virus for most of 2020. We live in a country that has allowed white supremacist vigilantes to abuse and even murder people of color. We live in a country that continues to oppress most of the population with poverty and continues to mistreat entire groups of people based upon color, nationality, gender, gender identity, sexual orientation, and socioeconomic status. So on top of the persecution that many of us would face anyway because we are believers, we're also feeling the additional persecution of living in a time and in a space that we currently are. We feel the additional persecution inflicted upon us because we are a person of color, a woman, gay, or poor, or maybe a combination of these things. Yet in 2020, although we've experienced this additional persecution, we've also seen the uprising of a marginalized people and its allies. I've found this extremely encouraging. I'm encouraged to see young people exercise their rights. I'm excited to hear white people chant that black lives do matter. I'm encouraged to see people advocating for living wages for all people. And I'm encouraged to see the people of God leave the comfort of their sanctuaries and affect real change in their communities. And while all of this has been encouraging, there's also something deeply unsettling about having to fight these fights. And the first inclination is to think that what's exhausting or frustrating or maddening or unsettling, whatever it is you might feel about the fact that we're fighting these fights, is the fact that we have to fight them at all still in 2020, that we are still having to advocate and fight for basic human rights for all people. But honestly, many of us aren't surprised to learn that racism, sexism, homophobia, xenophobia, and greed rule our country, right? It's what it was founded upon. Those of us who have, who have been or are currently inflicted with poverty know the feeling of helplessness that comes when the bills are due or when decisions have to be made or really can't be made because we're limited. 
Those of us who are people of color know the feeling of helplessness that comes when we experience microaggressions or even overt acts of racism in our places of employment or institutions of learning. And that's what is unsettling, that feeling of helplessness. 2020 has left many of us feeling helpless in a lot of ways, but the truth is that that's what persecution does. It makes you feel helpless. It exposes a weakness. Persecution exposes weakness. That's unsettling, especially now. We have to come face to face with our weaknesses and then cope with the fact that it's exposed, that other people can see it as well, especially when we live in a culture that celebrates the hustle and the power to make things happen. So we cover our areas of perceived lack or imperfection with posed snapshots and claims of confidence that doesn't truly exist. The reality is, is that we as a culture have a hard time reconciling our imperfections or weaknesses internally, and we certainly don't want them exposed. But Paul reminds us later in chapter 12 that in our weakness, God's power is made perfect. How often we as believers forget this. We have forgotten that God has not abandoned us. And if we truly understood this, we wouldn't cover our insecurities or perceived imperfections. We wouldn't have to force so much of our lives. And we wouldn't wallow so deeply in that feeling of helplessness because we know that our God who has not abandoned us will, make his, will exchange our weakness for his strength. We need to get this thought that God has not abandoned us embedded into our thought patterns. And when we do, we will have joy despite heartache. We will have peace in the midst of chaos. We will value and continue to fight for ourselves and fellow brothers and sisters, despite whatever persecution comes our way. We are persecuted but not abandoned. The God who moves mountains is with us. The God who parts seas and holds the sun is with us. Alpha and Omega is with us. Our strong tower is with us. The Prince of Peace is with us. We may be persecuted, but we are not abandoned. That's what his word says. That's what he has promised us multiple times throughout the scriptures. See, we need to stop internalizing that what the news says, what social media influences us. We need to stop internalizing the reports on the economy and placing our hope in narcissistic politicians and instead start placing our hope more in God and internalizing his promises for us. We need to move forward with the promises of God. Go and seek God for provision. Show up and listen for God to provide the words. Stand and watch God fight the fight. He has not abandoned us, and he is able. I've seen these memes over the course of the past week suggesting that because 2020 was so messy and we went into it claiming double for our trouble and all this other stuff, that maybe we ought to instead walk a little bit quietly into 2021. That maybe we ought to just wait and see what happens and hope for the best. Enter it quietly, not, not quite as strong as you normally would for a new year. But I'm not ascribing to that. See, we may have been persecuted in 2020, but I dare you to enter into 2021 boldly. See, God has not abandoned us, and we ought to enter 2021 like we know who we are and we know who God is and who we are to him. Enter in 2021 claiming the promises of God. You ought to still claim joy for mourning. You ought to still claim beauty for ashes. Claim his strength for your weakness. He is able. The same God that rose Jesus, that rose Jesus from the dead is the same God who is able to lift you up from whatever manner of suffering you're experiencing. The same God that breathed life into Adam is able to breathe into you. The same God that spoke to dry bones can speak to the dead and deserted areas of your life. And the same God that spoke light into existence is able to speak light into the dark areas of your mind and your heart and your being. He is able. We are persecuted, but we are not abandoned. God is with you. His word has promised you that he will never leave you nor forsake you. And if you look back over your life, chances are that you've been brokenhearted, but he has lifted you up. You found yourself with more month than money, but he has provided for you. You found yourself hopeless, and yet you stood. See, God has not left you, not in 2020, not ever, and he will not now. Not only is God with you, he is able, and because he loves you beyond understanding, he is also willing. May God keep you and bless you. Grateful for God's peace.
text with us this evening. Uh, it is 2 Corinthians 4, uh, verses 8 through 9. Uh, again, that is 2 Corinthians 4, verses 8 through 9. I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. We are pressed on every side by troubles, but we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but not driven to despair. We are hunted down, but never abandoned by God. We get knocked down, but we are not destroyed. Please pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for another opportunity to, to stand behind the sacred desk and to share your word with your people, Lord. I just ask that in this time uh, that you would just speak through me, God, that you would grant me uh, your wisdom to share with your people, Lord, that uh, as we break open this word, that you would provide uh, your nuggets of wisdom and your nuggets of truth um, for those that are desperate to hear it, God. Uh, we ask that um, all that is shared, Lord, would be edifying and uplifting uh, to your kingdom and that we would allow it to um, to guide us into 2021, uh, ready to live a life that is pleasing to you. And in Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right. So I would like to lift up the sermon topic today, but God. Happy New Year's Eve. Uh, we are here at this altar again, whether it's in your house or, um, or it's standing here uh, behind this desk, uh, ready to wish 2020 uh, away. We are ready to, to say good riddance to this year. We've experienced a lot uh, from uh, New Year's Day of, of 2020 to, to now. We have experienced a global pandemic. Uh, we have um, gone through a pivotal national election. We have seen racial unrest in the way we haven't seen uh, in years before. We have lost uh, several great idols, um, and, and we have collectively just been through the ringer. Um, and while I think we are, are very much so all ready to say goodbye to this year, I think that we would be remiss if we didn't take the time to appreciate uh, the, the beauty for ashes that we have seen in 2020. Uh, we have seen uh, great things like uh, the first woman uh, and first woman of color uh, vice president elect. We have seen uh, uh, 67 percent of Americans who are ready to deal with systemic racism in this nation. Uh, we've all learned how to uh, use Zoom and for that I think we can all give ourselves a clap on the back because uh, while we never expected to have to do this uh, any of this in 2020 uh, it's what we were given and so we are currently making uh, lemonade out of the lemons that we were given. Um, and if you're like me, you're ready for 2021 to come, but you're still feeling a little apprehensive. You want her to come in, sit down, don't touch anything, don't move the wrong way. We just want to try to have a good year. But I think we're wary given uh, how 2020 happened for all of us. Um, 2020 has challenged us, but I also believe that there are some um, nuggets of hope that we've been able to find within this year. And I think that there um, is also some some hope that we can find from the text for 2021 as we move into, um, into this year of newness. Um, Paul writes about a life that we, um, that we will experience here in verses 8 and 9 of our text today. Um, and we see some hope that, that God is giving us um, from our relationship with him. If you're paying close attention to the text with me, um, you'll see that our hope lies in one simple word, but. That's all you need for the rest of this sermon, is just to remember the word but. Uh, but is often used uh, to mean except for, um, or to mean on the contrary, or on the other hand, and I would argue that Paul uses the term um, in this text to say on the contrary. Um, Paul is demonstrating to us uh, through these two verses that, um, that we can put our trust in God and reside, um, and allow that trust to reside in God's but. Um, he uses one small conjunction to give us some hope for a, another full year. Uh, if you're like me and you grew up on uh, Schoolhouse Rock, then you probably remember what a conjunction is. But if it's been a little while since you've been in grade school and you're scratching your head trying to remember what exactly is a conjunction again, uh, let me help remind you. Uh, a conjunction's function is uh, to uh, place two words, two phrases, two sentences, or two clauses together. Uh, it generally um, it uh, is used with and, or, or but, um, and like I said in this text this evening, uh, Paul uses the word but eight times to uh, join uh, eight sentiments of the, um, of the human experience. So he uses the words pressed, crushed, perplexed, despaired, uh, hunted down, abandoned, knocked down, and destroyed. 
Um, and so I think we can all agree that out of the context of this scripture, uh, none of us really want to embrace any of these words. No one wakes up saying, oh man, I really hope to feel despair today, or I really hope that I feel abandoned by the ones that I love the most, or, or I'm really hoping to feel pressed to the point of crushing in, in my work. Uh, no one wants to feel any of those emotions, but can we all agree that at some point in time we have felt that way? We have lost loved ones, we've struggled with employment, uh, we have uh, worried about our children, we've worried about our spouses. Uh, in some way or another, we have experienced all of these emotions uh, and felt the heaviness that they leave behind. Um, and I would argue that this is the reality of life without God, uh, that we feel these emotions to the point that they are a breaking point for us, that they would break us, um, and that there's never any relief that comes. Uh, but I will, um, but I like to point out that we do have some hope uh, because we do believe in God, that there is, um, there's another side of this, right? That um, Paul uses the word but here to demonstrate the contrary nature of these emotions that we will feel. So he points out we are pressed but we are not crushed. We are hunted down, but not abandoned. We are perplexed, but not despaired. Uh, this but is our guarantee. It's a guarantee of what we find in our walk with God. Um, as Christians, we have been very blessed to not experience the full weight and the full heaviness of what any of those words, pressed, crushed, abandoned, hunted down. We don't have to experience what any of those words truly mean because we have a God who walks with us. He is our assurance and our hope that everything that comes after the but is going to be for our good. So even though we will feel pressed, we won't be crushed. So even though we feel despaired or perplexed, we won't be despaired by our complexion. Uh, God provides hope with every but that he utters into our lives. We can still be hopeful because God provides the contrary outcome uh, to the world's circumstances. So where the world likes to offer darkness, God offers light. Where the devil brings death, God brings light. Our haters say failure, but God says success. Where there is negativity, God speaks a but, and the only outcome on the other side can be the positive nature of his good. God shows up for us in the middle of our lives and provides a but to turn our whole situation around. It's easy to focus on all the ways in which 2020 um, has been a tough year, in which we have felt pressed, in which we felt knocked down, in which we have experienced all of the things on the before side of Paul's equation. But this year has taken so much from us, um, and I invite us to stop and to take inventory, that instead of looking at it negatively, to ask ourselves, where has God placed a but in your sentence of your 2020? Where has he offered you a but in the circumstances of what you have faced this year? We could harp on a lot of things, right? We could harp on how we haven't been to church in the same way uh, that we normally do since March. But then we would miss out on the ways in which we've been blessed with great technology to be able to still be together and to stream church on Sundays. Uh, we could harp about how we've been at home with our families for lots of months and how it's graded on our nerves at different times and how we never anticipated having to teach our children, but we would miss out on the blessing of being able to quarantine uh, with someone and not uh, experiencing isolation in this year. Uh, we could harp on how tiny our home office is or how much we're realizing we definitely need more space in our homes, uh, but then we would miss out on the fact that we've been blessed to be employed in a year of high unemployment rates, and we have been blessed to have a roof over our heads uh, when there are a lot of people who are worrying about what rent will be uh, as, uh, the, as the rent moratorium comes up. We could complain, but then we would miss the but, right? God's but offers a change in our perspective. Uh, he offers us protection in the midst of all that we experience. Uh, and if, we're, uh, if we aren't careful, we miss the but and we just focus on the negativity. So we focus on all of those words that come before, the pressed, the perplexed, the hunted down, uh, and we miss the promise that comes on the other side of it. We miss the work that God is doing when we don't pay attention to the but. As we see 2020 coming to a close, it's important to take inventory of where God has spoken a but into your life and, show you, and shown you in just how many ways he is actually acting on your behalf. The reality is, is that in order to see the but of God, we must also see the troubling parts of life. 
uh, the text shows us that we're not exempt from, from any of those emotions that Paul talks about. We're not exempt from any of those struggles. Uh, the pressing doesn't disappear and the knocking down doesn't avoid us, but they won't overcome us. And that's where our hope lies going forward. We won't be overcome by what we experience. We serve a God who interjects a but into our story. He sees our circumstances and says, but that's not the end of the story. I'm still writing. And if that's not a reason to celebrate, well then I'm not sure why you're celebrating the end of 2020 in the first place. I'm grateful to serve a God who says and sees us in the middle of our mess and is able to say, but I can clean that up. I'm grateful for a God who sees the trouble that I'm facing and says, but I can save you, but I'm here to help, but I will offer a comfort for you. This is why we can still be hopeful going into the new year. We know that this year has been nothing that we expected and 2021 may not also, but we know that there is a but that will help us on the trajectory of our 21 that will make all things be put into perspective. We may be in the middle of doom and gloom now, but we know that there is a but from God coming. God speaks victory and joy, and we can be assured that even if we don't see it right now, that it will come in the by and by of God's timing. And just as 2021 or 2020 felt like it would never end, and this pandemic seems to continue to be raging, and it's gone on longer than any of us anticipated back in March, we've made it to the finish line of 2020. You made it. We're here. We survived. We're alive. You survived all that 2020 threw at you. Take a deep breath. I know it feels like a lot, but you survived. And even though this year has felt like three long years stuffed into one, it didn't take you out. 2021 has some big shoes to fill. We're all looking forward to what newness God will be doing for all of us. We're all hoping to be able to name and claim such a great year. And even if you're still feeling a little bit nervous about what 2021 may have to offer, I guarantee you one thing, that you can claim that it will be the year of God's but. There has never been a time in our lives where God hasn't spoken a but into our lives. So God will show up and will show and demonstrate his faithfulness to us in each one of our lives in 2021. We can go confidently and know that God will not abandon us. Paul promises that in the text, that we may feel hunted down, but we won't be abandoned by God. And that promise is beautiful. In 2021, God is calling us to embrace his butt. He's still crafting and creating your story. It doesn't end here. It doesn't end with the grief of this year. It doesn't end with the sadness and the, the overwhelming nature of making it through 2020. It doesn't end. You won't be consumed. You won't drown in what you're experiencing. You won't be swallowed, but you will be victorious. And whatever 2021 brings, we can expect to see the butt of God, the butt of his nature, the butt of his promise, the butt of his personality. And for that, we should remain hopeful. Thank you. Amen. Our associates have blessed us tonight. And if I could, one more time, invite your attention to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 8 and 9. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, cast down, but not destroyed. I want to preach briefly around our theme, still hopeful. Pray with me. God, we love you and we thank you for your grace and for your mercy. Thank you, God, for your loving kindness. We pray, God, that our attempts tonight of praise and worship have been pleasing in your sight. And I ask you now, God, to speak one more time. Speak, Lord God, because your servants are listening. Speak, God, because a word from you makes all of the difference. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Still, still hopeful. Beloved of God, as we examine the text that is before us, Paul's second letter to the church of Corinth, he is attempting to correct some misinformation about himself, his apostleship, 
and some opposition that has come up against him in that growing, vibrant church. After his first letter in which people didn't necessarily receive it all of the best, they find themselves being swayed by false teaching, and Paul was attempting to get them to see not just his own validity, not just his own apostleship, but more importantly, the validity of the gospel of Jesus Christ. He understands that they've experienced hardship, and he understands how difficult their time had been. He knows the persecution that they're facing, and so he writes them this letter to encourage them that even though they're struggling and even though it has been hard, that the gospel is still worth it, that the promises and the declarations that they have, he has made has still ring true. And I came simply tonight to encourage somebody to know that regardless of the hardship of this past year, regardless of the ups and downs, and in spite of pandemic and masks and physical distancing, that what God has declared is still true and we can still have hope because we serve a God who maintains his relevancy and his place in our lives. I believe that Paul teaches us in the text just a few things I'll tell you and that we'll, we'll pray on in the new year. The first thing that I believe the text teaches us is that you and I can still be hopeful because of collective presence. Paul, Paul is not with them in Corinth as he is writing this letter, yet he declares we. He, he says we are troubled. He reminds them that they're not in this thing alone. He wants to let them know and to us know that you and I ought still be hopeful because of the collective presence that we experience, that it is certainly the idea that we're not in this thing alone, that I'm grateful to serve a God that promises never to leave me nor forsake me, but I'm also grateful for people that he has connected to me to be a help and to build me up, those who have prayed for me and prayed with me, those who I have prayed for and with, those who worship and serve the Lord, those who pour into me and those that I pour into. I am thankful that my life is not just me, but it is also a we, that as you reflect on the past year and the year that is to come, please remember that there is a we connected to your life that has helped you along the way, that because there is a collective presence, you and I ought to be thankful thankful that the Lord didn't just keep you, but he kept those connected to you. He didn't just bless you, but he blessed your children. He didn't just bless you, but he blessed your parents. He didn't just keep you, but he kept your friends. I am thankful for the collective we. This ain't for the go it alone saints, but I'm talking to those who know that this year has exposed who is really for you. He has exposed to you who really is praying for you, who really has your back. All your fair weather friends that have fallen by the wayside, but you are thankful for the collective presence of just the few that are still with you. That you can either focus on those who left or you can deal with the relationships that are still intact. In fact, beloved, we is the theme of the entire chapter as Paul says things like, therefore, see, we have this ministry that we have received mercy. We faint not. He declares that we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord. He says that we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. He says that we have the same faith and spirit. He says we are not looking to things that, we are, that are seen, but looking to the unseen to remind us that not only are we not in this by ourselves, but when you mess with me, then you're also messing with we. That you ought be grateful that when the enemy attacks you, it ain't just you by yourself, but all of those saints that are connected to you, the entire body of Christ. That's why, beloved, your prayer life ought to expand beyond just you into all those who are connected to you, for our collective presence testifies that we serve a God who keeps his promises. I'm still hopeful. Because of our collective presence, can I submit secondarily, beloved, that I'm still hopeful because of certain persistence. Notice, if you will, that every in issue that Paul rises, uh, there is a response to. That is to say that there is nothing that happens that goes unanswered. Yes, troubled. Yes, perplexed. Yes, persecuted. Yes, cast down. But all of these have answers. And that has been your experience in 2020, hasn't it? That while there has been problems, there have been difficulties, there have been troubles, there have been confusing circumstances, there have been persecutions, there have been some up days and some down days. But for it all, there has been 
given an answer for it all. God has provided you with answer. And the challenge for us is to remember that there's always an answer for what we have faced and what we will face. For beloved, make no mistake, just because the dot, the calendar will change and just because you got to remember to write 2021 on your everything that you sign and all of your checks, we will have challenges in 2021. But the God who kept us all of this year is also the God that will keep us moving forward, that there is a persistence in God. There is a certainty of his persistence. Paul does not deny the reality of the difficulties, but he reminds us and reminds them of the persistent presence of God, that through all of the trouble, God is there, and that through all of the dis disappointments, God is there, and through all of the distress, and through all of the persecution, the Lord is there, and somebody can testify that you have hope because you know the Lord is still with you, because if he is there, if his presence is there, then comes his promises, and if his promises come, there comes his performance because the God that we serve will always perform what he has promised. He will always do what he said he would do, that he knows the challenges that are coming and he reminds us that there is something to be answered for every challenge. Can I submit, beloved, and I'm still hopeful not just because of the collective presence and not just because of the certain persistence, but can I tell you that this text teaches me that I, am, I can still be hopeful because of the celebrative perspective. The Bible says that we are troubled on every side, yet not destroyed, uh, not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, cast down, but not destroyed. Can I tell you, this is the problem part of the text for me, because out of all of the difficulty that Paul mentions, it's all in the present tense. Not only does Paul say we to remind us that we're together, but he also says are. And can I tell you, I was mad about that thing until I read the text a little bit more carefully. I was angry and tried to wonder, how is Paul writing to encourage when he's telling me that what I'm facing is present tense? But I, I recognized that not only is the difficulty present tense, but also the response is present tense. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's good news. That not only is Paul telling me that my trouble is present tense, but he's also telling me that the response to the trouble is present tense. Literally suggesting that Paul is encouraging us to shift the focus from the difficulty to the answer. Yes, I can see the difficulty. Yes, I can see the distress and I can see the trouble and I can see the perplexity, but I can also see that the Lord has answer and this is the power a celebrative perspective. It is the reminder to us that I can remain hopeful when I see that I have problems, but that ain't all I have. And I wonder if there's anybody who can put hands in the chat and declare, I got some issues, but that ain't all I got. I can testify that I got some struggles, but I still have God. I got some up days and down days, but I still have my joy. I have some difficulty, but I still have peace. I still have my hope because the God that I serve will not leave me nor forsake me and so I must approach my life with a celebrative perspective that says I know of all of the trouble that I have but I'm still here. I know all of the difficulty but I still have my joy. I know I got trouble but I'm still not distressed. I know I've been perplexed but I'm not in despair. I understand that I've been persecuted but I haven't been forsaken. I know I've been cast down but I have not been destroyed and your testimony is I I still got some stuff left. I know you lost some things. I know the year has been hard. I know this ain't how you wanted to bring in the new year, but thanks be to God, you still have what you have. You still got some sanity. You still got some loved ones. You still got some joy. You still got a gift. You still got a dream. You still got a purpose. You still got an anointing. You still got challenges, but you still have hope because God is on the throne. We are so thankful to God for all that remains, for how he continues to keep us, how he continues to bless us, knowing that God is in control. As you are streaming, and I don't know who you're streaming, if you're watching with somebody, but let's, let's take a moment now to gather around as we seek the Lord God together in this new year to be able to ask him to keep us, 
Will you pray with me? Most gracious, eternal God, our Father, we say thank you. We say thank you, Lord God, for how you have kept us. We say thank you, Lord God, for the marvelous way in which you have shown yourself mighty and strong. We thank you, Lord God, because we know that if it had not been for you who was on our side, as hard as this year has been, as challenging as it has been, as unpredictable as it has been, we would not remain. We thank you, Lord God, for the, for the way, Lord, that your grace and mercy has shown up in our lives. And we believe, Lord God, that as hard as it was, as stressful as pandemic has been, as how, Lord God, we have lost so much of what we would have called normal, we're thankful, God, that you are still on the throne. And that, Lord God, even though we never expected it, even though, God, we never saw it coming, we're thankful that your word is still true and that not only did you see it, Lord God, but you had plans for us in it. We pray, Lord God, knowing that we didn't get everything right this year, and that, Lord God, we, we, we sinned more than we would care to admit to anyone, but we're thankful, God, that the blood of Jesus still covers the blood of Jesus still cleanses. The blood of Jesus still reaches from the highest mountain and flows to the lowest valley. We thank you, God, and ask your forgiveness that, Lord God, as we move into new year, as we move into new time, as we move, Lord God, into new calendar year, Lord God, we want to walk with new perspective and right relationship with you. We thank you, Lord God, for our family, for those, that, Lord God, that we are streaming with, for those, Lord God, who are around our living rooms as we have changed, Lord God, the way that we've had to worship you. But we're thankful that you continue to meet us. Lord God, we didn't see this previous year coming. And Lord God, we have no idea what lies ahead in 2021. But we're thankful that, Lord God, you go ahead of us. We th we're thankful, Lord God, that you see it coming. We're thankful, Lord God, that you know all about it. So we pray, Lord God, that as you strengthen our faith, as you correct our thinking, as you move our mindset, that, Lord God, you would prepare our hearts even now, that you would prepare our spirits even now for the work and that you have for us and the way, Lord God, that you are trying to make for us. Above all else, Lord God, above all of the creature comforts, Lord God, we want to be more like you. And so we pray, Lord God, that as you direct us, as you move in us, Lord God, as, Lord God, you continue to work in our lives, we pray, Lord God, that you would get glory. We pray, Lord God, that whatever you have to do, Lord God, to allow us to experience you, in new ways. Show us, Lord God, where you're working, that we can meet you there. We're not foolish enough, Lord God, to think that there won't be trouble, but we pr pray, Lord God, and bind up every work of the enemy, even now in the name of Jesus. And we loose, Lord God, your spirit, and not just in our lives, but in the lives of our families. We loose, Lord God, your working within our congregation. And we pray a healing, Lord God, today for what we may need later. We pray deliverance, Lord God, today for what we'll experience in this year. We pray peace today for whatever, Lord God, lies ahead. And we're thankful, Lord, that it is already done. We pray, Lord God, as we yield to you, as we draw closer to you, that, Lord God, as you place us back, Lord God, in whatever sense of normalcy may come ahead. We believe and trust that the things that have been removed that you don't want us to have, Lord God, that we don't pick back up. Lord God, the things that you have taken from us, Lord God, we pray that you would uh, give us the strength and wisdom to leave alone, but we're also thankful for what you'll add. We pray, Lord God, believing that us as church family, that us as this branch of Zion, has ministry work ahead. So we pray, Lord God, that you would send the gift, that you would send the vision, that you would send the, 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 the workers, that you would send the laborers, that, Lord God, ultimately, we would be more like the church that you have designed for us to be. 
We're thankful, Lord God, for the hope and promise of this new year. We believe, Lord God, that you are able to make all grace abound. And we believe and trust that you know the plans that you have for us. They're plans of good and not of evil. Plans to give us future and to hope. And for that, God, we give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for worshiping with us. Please make sure you tell someone Happy New Year in the chat. And Happy New Year. Happy 2021. We are so thankful for all that God has done in the previous year. And we believe that God still is at work. And we're so thankful. Please let me, before you log off, give benediction. Please let me bless you with final words as we seek God together as we celebrate this new year. So please... Uh, receive this blessing. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his counsels upon you and give you peace. May God bless you in your coming and your going, in your work and in your leisure, and all that you do. May love, joy, and peace follow you, and the God of love, joy, and peace will sustain you until we meet again. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Happy New Year.